This is Majesty Sussex Report. I'm Antonio, and thank you for spending some of your valuable time with us. Well, what do you think? Was that an intro or an intro, right? I mean, the theme song and all. <laughs> I, thought, I, I couldn't help myself, folks. I really, really could not help myself. I also love how much great press and 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 how this little red dress or or scarlet red dress now has is all over the place and the amount of um, um, positive press that that um, Megan you know magically apparent because they asked where, where was she and she's like well I'm at home with my kids but I'll be out soon I've got a function to go to something of interest and something I would like to support it, it was so idiotic, the whole thing about where, where is Megan and this whole narrative that they've got about, oh, there's trouble. And, and still they insist, right? Because when she shows up now at the function uh, at, for, for the LA um, Children's Hospital, she then they start to write, oh, Megan appears solo at function. Um, you, you folks were following Prince Harry, right? So you you know he's in Africa, probably on his way back. So unless you've got like a teleportation kind of device for him to teleport himself from Africa, um, <laughs> from the continent <laughs> to um, California, you know, it it takes it takes a while, right? But to be quite honest also the whole narrative it get, it's getting really stale and and for the people that still follow this sort of negative um, narrative you know good luck to them because it's just very it's very obvious now I mean if you don't realize by now what they're doing and how it's getting done and all of that then then you I mean you are just a hater, right? You're just a point blank. You're just a hater who wants to hate and you don't care about anything else. I had in the comment section oh talking about the comment section. I guess we should get to comments, right? <laughs> but let me let me say let me say this. Someone in the comment section said um I don't like the outfit. Why does she always have to show so much skin? Can she dress decently? And I thought to myself, um, um, mm, ah, don't care, delete. <laughs> what, what do you mean, dress decent, decently? Like, is she, I, what is wrong with, with, with the dress? What is wrong with what she's wearing? And I think it's great that she was able to take these designer dress. I mean, Wes Gordon, um, Carolina Herrera did a fantastic job. I mean, I love the part in the docuseries where they come to the fitted. And I think it was Wes. He's on their, like, <laughs> thing. And, and Prince Harry is like, what the heck is that guy doing under my wife's, like, <laughs> hey. And then, you know, he's he, like, he was like, oh yeah, he has a husband. Okay, okay, okay. It's all alright. <laughs> You should have seen him. He's like, oh, I love them. They're just the best. 
Um, but I'm happy that she has reused it in a different way. And um, look at all the attention it got. It's, it's sort of very fascinating to me. But she looks absolutely beautiful. Her hair, oh my gosh. I love her hair like that. <laughs> I sound like a creep. But I do, I really do. I love that kind of wavy kind of look and it just looks so natural and, and she doesn't have to like pull it back. Mind you, I do like it in a bun also depending on the occasion and where she's going. All right, let's just agree that the Duchess of Sussex knows how to dress and she knows how to style herself, okay? Everything just goes right where it needs to go and it's styled the way it needs to style. That's it. Well, welcome everyone. That's my preamble, five minutes. Let's get to the comments. All right, so let's get to it. Um, our first one is from Connie Bummer. And um, Connie writes, that photo of Megan, which they had it go fading, symbolizes harm. There is no other explanation why they would do that. There is the intention to delete her. They hate her that much. Connie, I, I was not joking or trying to be dramatic about it. I literally was looking for to read articles that had these bombastic sort of headlines to see, um, I think in some sense, to pick it apart because it's so easy to pick a lot of what they write apart as untrue or they conflate things. So when I got to this article, I was about to, to, to scroll down to start to read. And then I saw the image sort of start to disappear. And I thought it was just because I was scrolling down. But just to double check, I, I went back up and indeed it started to disappear. And the chill that went down my spine, I am not joking, I felt like my heart dropped. And because you're absolutely right. That is what that means. When you have an image of a person and then you have that image just slowly disappear, that's what it means. Now, as I said in, in, in the episode, they can argue very well and say, no, that's not what we meant at all. It's just a reflection of the title of the piece. But we know how these people work. We know how they function. It's all dog whistles. It's all these insinuations. Like I have been stopped in my, in, in my, thought process or anything when I hear them say things like he wants to come back but she is the one stopping him from coming back it's because of her and this sort of goes on and on and on they keep taunting they keep sending out these messages that she is the problem she is the obstacle between Harry going back to the UK. And he's made it very clear to all of them. He is not going back there. For what? For what? He's made it also very clear about the safety of his children and about the safety of his wife. And they keep saying, well, we're safe. No, you're not. I saw eggs being thrown at the new king eggs being thrown at him. Imagine if those 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 were just packets with, with, with acid or something in it. The man is absolutely right. That country is not safe. When you have people who are in charge of security writing 
hideous things about your wife. When you have the people, let me say this again. You have the people who are in charge of your security or security. These are senior officers. And they have a WhatsApp group talking disgusting, racist things about your wife. And then these idiots have the gall to sit there and say, oh, it's safe. I'm sorry. I saw the kind of safety they received, security they received in Colombia, and the security they received in Nigeria. And unless you're willing to provide that kind of security, I think not. I think not. It is disgusting what these people are doing. Disgusting, and we have to keep calling them out. We have to keep calling them out as uncomfortable as it is, as unwilling as it's going to affect some of our sensibilities, right? Like, I get it. I get it, folks. I honestly get it. I don't mind doing it. Like, I'll do it. I'll keep doing it. I just don't want anyone getting angry at me for doing it. Because, okay, um, thank you, Connie. Uh, Connie, sorry, we, we'll go to the next one. Sorry about that, folks. I felt, um, I felt my, uh, getting choked up there. Uh, because, you know, when we talk about these things, I don't, I, I don't know how to detach from the emotion that any living person that is functional, that is able to access their emotions at any time, or that is that that is willing to or allows it to, doesn't feel this sort of wrong and and it, in some sense disparate. I don't want to say desperation, but. I, 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 I'm not Meghan Markle. I'm not Prince Harry. But I'm a person who is able to empathize with their situation. I'm a person who understands discrimination and racism because I've lived it. I understand what it is like to walk into a room and be the only person of color in that room. I understand when you have the best intentions and people don't want to see those intentions. All they want to do is humiliate you and somehow destroy you. I know what those things feel like because I've lived them. So when I speak on what the Duchess and the Duke has gone through, and especially her, it is just suffocating because this is being done on a global scale. A global scale. She's being used as an example for people like you, for people like me, that we should shut up. And if we don't, we will pay for it. And in many ways, Megan has not said a word. As a matter of fact, many times when she still speaks, I see how she's very careful in the way she approaches an answer. She's very mindful, even in the um, Oprah interview, even in any other interviews she's given. When she talks about that family, it's not about the family she's talking about. She has said a couple of things here or there, but not with disrespect. She's just saying, this is what happened. And I get very, because this is actually very, very close to, to, to me. And a couple months ago, I, I, I walked into a meeting. I no longer work for the organization and that is fine with me. But I walked into a meeting 
that I was expecting to actually lay out what the, my plans were for, 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 for my role in respect to the next, the next year. And I walked into an ambush of accusations and the person who's making these accusations knows very well that that's not true. And I'm looking at him and I said, what are you talking about? I said, that never happened. I said, you were, you were in that room with me. I said, I didn't say a word. If anything, I, the one word I said was enough. And I said, we need to end this meeting because I started to get quite emotional about it because I was being accused of something that, that, that is, is just beyond me. But he stood there and what looked me in the eye and maintained his accusation. And then he had his best friend, who's also employed, who they both have the same senior level, collaborate what he was saying and said, yes, what he's saying is true. And I'm like, well, you weren't even in that room or in that meeting. How, how are you? So you see these things, it's, it's, if you haven't experienced it, I think sometimes people think we are just inventing things or lying. I mean, I left that meeting and I, 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 I went to like two people who I trusted, ah, big mistake. And I said to, to, to one of them, I said, I just came out of a meeting and I don't know what to make of it. And she said to me, what happened? And I explained to her, she goes, what? She goes, that's not true. I said, oh my God, thank you. I said, because I'm starting to think that maybe I'm, I'm delirious. But here is the funny thing. When it came time for her to put her name on what they were saying is not true, just to back me up, she refused to. And I went to the second person who I trusted and I asked her the same thing. I said, listen, I've written out a memo, a letter outlining everything that happened. I said, you were privy to a couple of things. I said, I've just put your name next to them. I don't need you to verify everything, just these three things that you were privy to. Would you please? And she said, no, sorry. She said, I'm so, I'm so sorry, Antonia. I don't want to get involved. I... I, I just couldn't, I, I didn't know what to do. These, these are people I trusted. These are people who I called friends. And when I listened to Megan's experience, it gets to me because it's very close to home. I know what it feels like, you know? Okay, Angela, let's get to yours. Um, when Harry married Megan, they made a vow to God and each other. They are on the right side of God. Harry doesn't owe anyone an apology. God is in charge, not Charles or Willie. They need to wake up to reality. I hope they wake up to reality. It's, it's these commentators. I honestly... I've started to think that there's something wrong with them. Either intellectually, either um, analytically, or they're, they're in an echo chamber and they just confirm their own biases back and forth, back and forth, and they all think they're right. And the funny thing, which is not funny at all, is that the, the second you think someone is finally seeing the light, like I've watched these shows and you'll have someone, one of the commenters will say, well, that's not really fair. And they'll, they, they will say some things that I'm like, oh, finally he gets it. Or finally she got it. And then either the next segment or the next day back to the same nonsense. So look, I understand people 
have to respond to their producer, the director, the owner of the whatever, the station, the network. But there, there, there is almost like this... Comp- comp- it's sort of like a mob, like, like, like almost like a mafia kind of thing, right? And they have all lied so much about this particular thing that they now believe it. When you have grown men, women, women attacking this woman over and over and over again, and I'm quite serious when I say, men know what you're doing and men watch what you're doing. So for those women who keep attacking Meghan Markle, when your spouse, when the person that's with you treats you the same way at home or treats you a certain way, know that you have reinforced that behavior for that person that's treating you that way. Because believe me, this is not just about Meghan Markle. It's about you also. Very much so about you. And for the men, especially these, these, these men, if you want to call them that, that want to have a marriage they would like to see this marriage fall apart. They would be excited. They would be rejoiceful. So what kind of soul and heart do you have? And you're asking and saying over and over, over Harry needs to apologize to his father, his brother, and their spouse and their spouses. Are you out of your freaking bejesus mind? So if you've read the book, if you've watched the docu series, he needs to go and apologize to his abuser. You see, this is why I think there is fundamentally something wrong with these people. They have so internalized abuse. They have so justified it. It's okay with them. And I go back again. I'm not, this is, I'm not joking. I go back again to what James O'Brien talked about, about the abuse that they suffered when they were kids that taught them to numb everything, to numb it and to excuse it. Because when you're six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or whatever, and you're being extremely beaten because you've gotten an answer wrong in school, or the headmaster is 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 abusing you at night and you're being served up, this this is happening in the UK. This is not me saying this. They all are just numb. And for them, this kind of abuse is just okay. What is she so like upset about? What, what, What are people so upset about? Nothing has happened to her. She seems fine. It's like they just don't get it. I agree with he needs to apologize for absolutely nothing. Nothing. They're the ones who need to. Now, your next comment was, um, thank you, Antonio, didn't really get in, didn't really get in the head when he was, yes. Mostly all of the little bits of common sense was knocked out of him. Charles is just as bad bad world model and a selfish parent full of hate and jealousy Charles and Willie must be related to Rupert Murdoch or DJT I have been saying a few a few podcasts podcasts or episodes where for me to understand and for me to sort of justify some of the things that William has been engaged in now, there was a time where even in spare, as, as, as Prince Harry writes, where it seemed that the two brothers were, were I want to say, extremely close, 
but there was a relationship there of of you're my brother, I'm your brother, you know, when we need to, we'll take care of each other. But there is an understanding that the upbringing that Prince William received is very different than the upbringing that Harry received. The upbringing that William received is one that you train the heir. So you're training the heir to, to, to be completely loyal to the crown. Nothing else matters. The crown is what's important, right? The crown must survive against all odds, against anyone. There's nothing more important than that. And you are the sole person that will keep it going and keep it alive and pass it on. So that responsibility is in you. And you have to protect it against everything else. And that is what William is doing. That is what Charles is doing. That is what Elizabeth II did. Against everything, the crown was the most important thing to protect. Against son, daughter, um, 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 spouse, against everything, you protect the crown. And the people around that, whether you call them gray suits, blue suits, whatever, I don't really care. They are the institution that is there. Now, keep in mind, you are being trained by the institution. So whatever, that is why Diana was so adamant in getting those two boys to get them out of the palace, get them to do stuff, to see real people, to understand suffering, to be empathetic. She understood that because she knew that the training, especially her older son, the heir to the throne was going to receive is one that is like tunnel vision. Tunnel vision. You have one goal, and that goal is to protect the crown against everything and by doing that we will protect you right it is a cult it is an absolute cult there was a movie i think that i forgot who was it with robert de niro maybe where it was he was a lawyer or something and this law firm came and they would recruit certain people but then they always won cases Maybe I have it wrong. I, I think I watched it like a few years ago. I don't remember the whole plot, but it, it's similar to that, where you know your loyalties or everything is to this one thing, right? The crown must survive against everything. Look at the things that Elizabeth II did to her sister, her spare. Look at the things she did to her. And I'm sure she didn't see it as something wrong. She just see it as, no, that's against the rules. You can't do that. So, and I do think that that entry that William received with the club, the, the, the golf club, when he was, I think, 11 or 12 or something like that. The research that I've done on that kind of entry on a child does say that the repercussions uh, of, of it doesn't show immediately because at that age the brain is still doing stuff and developing all that kind of stuff but it, it will manifest itself later in life they could get angry very quickly um, um, be very patient be violent there's a whole bunch of things that in my research that is what I came up with and I, th I did a podcast on it where I talked about it because it's it's, it's one of the ways, because I wanted to understand how did he, of everything we've, we've read, heard, how did he become that, being Diana's son? The other thing too that I think is very telling is that I think it was very sweet when Prince Harry in Spare talks about William telling him you, know, you, should, you should speak to someone and Harry basically saying, I wasn't ready. I, I, didn't, I didn't feel like talking about mommy to other people. 
but we don't know whether he received that help or not. Who did he speak with? Because not all therapists are alike, right? And if it's the crown, the institution, bringing someone to speak with him, remember that person is going to be enforcing what the institution wants that person to enforce in regards to the air. I mean, a, a silly example would, 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 would be looking at um, Prince um, Princess Charlotte, the um, Bridgerton story, and Prince George, that story, with his um, mental health issue, and that doctor, the mother in desperation, wanted to find some solution and just give him up so that they can do experiments on him. And that man was a sadistic doctor just doing sadistic things to him, right? And he also wanted to control him. Because remember he said, he goes, I will turn you into nothing. You'll become nothing that only the sound of my voice will tell you what to do. I will kill what's inside you so you become nothing. And I don't think he's received that kind of help he should. Because I think he's 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 full of anger. He hasn't really dealt with his mother's death. And I think he blames her for a lot of things. And that is the way he acts up. That's the way he gives those stupid interviews blaming his mom for um uh, for, 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 for the things that 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 were done to her. And I think they have in, in essence brainwashed him to believe these these things. But I, I think parts of of whatever is happening in his physical self and his mental self is part of that too. <sighs> I'm going over more than my five minutes I'm supposed to dedicate <laughs> or three minutes each thing. Okay. I hope um let's 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 go to um the next ones. And our next comment comes from Sylvia Jallo, seven one two one. I hope I'm saying that correctly, Sylvia. Um, thank you so much, Antonio, for your excellent food for thought for everyone. Uh, the tabloids in particular, I often wonder what the church is doing. Are they waiting for something terrible to happen before they speak? If even it's the king who is the head of the Church of England, there must be someone to say something before history repeats itself. I am really worried about this things are getting out of hands as I see it. I thank you for um, the um, comment. I, when my, my first instinct is to say yes. And my second instinct is to say things are different and they should know that they are a lot more eyes and ears and people who are paying a lot of attention to what is happening that Diana did not have at the time. Now, having said that, no one will convince me unless they show me enormous amount of proof that what happened in New York was not intentional. I think it was absolutely intentional. I think that it was a warning because of how it happened and the things that they did. So having said that, if I go to what you're actually, the comment is about, about the church, I'll say this, you know how the um, I don't remember which, what were we read? Was it, was it, I don't remember where, where this information that is in my head right now. It's either from Spare or Endgame or somewhere else that they were talking about, or perhaps it was in one of the, um, newspapers and, and, and someone wrote a mea culpa or something. But they're talking about how these journalists, so-called journalists or tabloids or whatever, 
they will follow you. They will investigate. They will have detectives. They will, they've got, okay. They've got information on so many people and the clergy is not known for being saints. They're not known for <laughs> practicing what they preach. I'm not accusing anyone of anything. I'm just going off of historical data. So as far as I'm concerned, they say nothing. If anything, sometimes they even agree with what the tabloid that he either said or did or something. They'll collaborate and say, yes, that's what happened. It's it's a lack of moral integrity. It's the falling apart of society. Because the point for me is being, if you can do this, with impunity, with with, 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 with with no consequences, period, to a woman that is very recognizable. Many people know who she is, even before she, she got engaged with Prince Harry. And since she did, her 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 recognition has has, has multiplied by many. So we, we are all witness to what is happening. And as witnesses, they keep doing it because they're showing us we can do it. And I said that in, in, the, in this podcast, why do they do it? Because they can. There's nothing stopping them. Nothing at all stopping them from doing what, what, they're, what they're doing. There is no person with the moral courage to stand up and do something. It's people like us. It's people like us that see something that is wrong and are doing our best with what given ability we've got to do something. Right? I listened for a bit over a year to 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 Duchess of Success, to Petal, um, um, Facts and Two Cents, to um, um, Sherry On, um, and to Baron, of course. And I wanted to find, I said this many times, wanted to find community because I felt like I, 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 I couldn't do anything. I'm like, what is my, my, by myself doing what? What am I going to do? I'm like, oh, well, well, they're rich. They have security. They'll be fine. But, but that attitude kept coming back to me and going, what, what do you mean? What they're doing is setting her as an example so that you, you at the, at the bottom, you get the message. You shut up. You put up. Because if they can do it to her, she has resources, she's got money, she's, she's married to one of the most recognizable men, and so is he married to one of the most recognizable women. And if they can do it to them, to them, we have no hope. So when I found this community, I thought, oh, yes, there are people speaking out. And after a year, I, I, I got the courage after my, my hospital um, stay to, to say, okay, well, you want, you want to do this, do it. Add your voice so that perhaps if there's just one, two, three, five people are able to actually listen and to change the way they see the situation and understand what is happening to this woman what they're doing to this couple is unacceptable because I am not I'm telling you Sylvia I've got no hopes on look the Church of England was created because 
the king wanted to not this king 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 I forgot which one now it was um, King Henry the something the fifth the sixth the seventy eighth um, wanted to 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 get re- remarried right and and the Pope wasn't going to consent to it and he's like well. Psh- Bugger off, I'll, I'll create my own church and I'll be the head of it and no one can tell me what to do. Right? You see, religion is a very interesting thing. Right? I I learned because I, I grew up in religion. I I, I I I don't I wouldn't say I'm a religious person any longer. I'm a person of faith. But when I started to learn the genesis of religion. And the purposes of it to keep the poor poor, to keep the masses controlled, right? To 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 give them hope of this afterlife. I was like, hang on a second. What are you talking about, Willis? <laughs> but I'm able to take what 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 science says and what I learned in university and all of that and still be able to reconcile it with, with my own faith. Religion, I'm not I'm not big on religion. Right? I'm not big on when any man goes in a pulpit and tells me that his righteous indigna- indignation and his interpretation of the Bible when I can see him doing things that are, con- are completely contrary to what I think the Bible is actually trying to teach us. Or any holy book. Most holy books actually teach Try, try to say the same thing, right? I'm getting now carried away now in religion. Um, Sylvia, I hope I answered that a little bit or commented a little bit on that, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't hold my breath on any of any of it. I think it it comes down to us, to just us, trying to change hearts and minds one by one. That's it. Okay, here we go. Um, June twenty one thirty seven writes. It's pretty obvious for all to see that there's something weird going on with William and Jason now. And your next comment was, um, a lot of these obnoxious trolls know that um, this is what is happening. People being paid to write negative lies about Megan, but they don't care. They just want to hate her for no apparent reason. I pray that God gives these malice hate mongers their just reward. June 21, 37, from your right into God's ears. Um, look, I, I, there is something, and I think many, when they can, they insinuate things, they say things, they try and telegraph things to the public. Whether or not William engages in X, Y, and Z, that's William's, you know, his, his, his personal thing. And that is, that is his thing. Here is where it becomes an issue for me. It becomes an issue for me when whatever it is that you're trying to hide, whatever it is that you're trying to protect or whatever is causing harm to others when you are willing to protect a commoner over your own brother or sister-in-law and you are aware that this person is doing things that they should not be doing Mind you, you are as culpable because you you knew they were doing it. You probably encourage it. And it was in benefit for you. Now, if the prince, the future king, is... And I'm going to say it. And I, I, I'm so fed up of being around the bush with this nonsense. If, if he's bisexual, let's say... Just, just, just be it. Just be it. Look, the world is ready for it. I understand maybe 20 years ago or, or whatever. 
the, the world is ready. There, there was this, this movie I saw not so long ago, um, Red, White and Blue. And the premise of the movie is that the first, the, the, the female president of the US, her son, so the first son, and the uh, um, despair prince in the UK, um, have a relationship, right? And the whole thing was that despair in the UK, uh, he, he had to keep it hidden, wouldn't come out. And the king, played by um, um, Richard Frey, Frey um, who was queer in real life, he plays the king and he, he says to the character um, who plays the son, sorry, the prince, basically, you know, um, England is not ready, or the United Kingdom or Britain is not ready for a, you know, and he goes, a homosexual um, um, uh, prince. And in the movie, it he proves it wrong. Like, actually, a lot of people came out to, to, to support the prince, to say, no, we are totally fine. I'm with it. So if he is bisexual by any chance, this is the time to just say this. Is, look, there's so much progress that that institution could actually do. I sometimes, I know this is going to sound absolutely ridiculous, but in, 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 in the spare time where my brain goes into that wonderland, that place of ultimate fantasy, I think, yes, I, I go down the rabbit hole and everything like Alice in Wonderland. King Charles could revolutionize the monarchy and actually be such a powerful force for good for change and he would be known as a consequential king he would go down into history and Prince William has the potential but I mean I mean, Harry is doing it, right? Harry is actually doing it. So maybe it's too much to ask for the other two also to do it. Maybe, maybe there's only so much um, backbone and so much truthfulness and, and progressiveness that was being given out and you know most of it fell on Prince Harry so when it comes to these derangers or these people even the um, so called journalists it's all about money I think I think part of it as I said prior I think some of them are in a warped sense of reality I think they're in this echo chamber that just reinforces their own ideas and what they think and I think they've started to believe their own lies uh, but when it comes to these other people that what if that person with the nose or the chin or the whatever um, says these vile things vile things it's because they have a large following as I said I, I've seen accounts go up and it'll be like 500 subscribers and within two weeks they're at a hundred thousand and i'm thinking how did that happen but it happens because also the algorithm supports this kind of thing right i i'm amazed how much there is no incentive to be good none there's no incentive to be good, to be honest, because I, I, I don't want to say I can guarantee you, but if tomorrow I, 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 and I got hit in the head somehow and I 
turned this channel into the opposite of what it is presently, I think within a week or two, like the numbers would, would, would skyrocket. It just, the algorithm is set up to feed this. And you see, it's, it's, it's quite big because it's being fed what the tabloid press so-called journalists are saying and doing and writing it's being fed this stuff also that these derangers keep 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 feeding so it's this big monster right so here we are right and we're like a little you know a little choo-choo train that is trying um but this is one choo-choo train that's not given up ever they, they will continue as long as they, the reward for them is money money it's, it's all it's all money you know i there's no there's no honor there's no i remember well i shouldn't say i remember because i don't it's not my memory it's just watching movies or or listen to elders speak when they would be like yeah you know mr so-and-so who used to own so-and-so factory or um this family that owned this thing like made these sacrifices so no one would be unemployed or bought gifts for all the kids at Christmas time. And it's like, that doesn't exist. As I said, Brian, the, the company I was working for, they had, and that's one of the reasons I, 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 I joined because they had all these cool things, all these benefits. And they're like, yeah, we are, we are, progressive and we're empathetic and we encourage this and 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 your mental health comes before blah 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 and all this stuff all this stuff that just seems so ideal but it's all window dressing it's all false it's all just for it's to stop it's all just for to say in an interview on 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 cnbc or you know, one of these business channels, so the CEO can say, oh, we do this, and we have in place all these um, benefits and this and that. And the bottom line is, it's just there so they can say they have it, right? It means nothing. It's all just about the money. Okay, and our next comment comes from Matilda. Matilda, Matilda Adesu, Adesu Loye? Uh, de soon loye, uh, de soon loye. I'm, I may be pronouncing that incorrectly. I apologize if I, if I am. Um, bueno, Matilda writes Antonio, Megan's crime is that she is beautiful, intelligent, classy, will not bend to abuse because of tiaras and outshine all of them, hands down. Amen. Here is the beauty about Megan and destiny and fate and um, her and Harry, their path crossing and in this, you know, crazy world of a billion plus people, um, these two souls were meant to meet. Megan, having grown up, in America, in the United States, has a very different reference to monarchy. Now, some may say many women, actually I shouldn't say any gender, there's, there's men, women, boy, girls, you know, dream of becoming a princess. And that dream is um illustrated and and promoted by movies that we watch by you know these these fantasy things and and the and the outline of the movie the story that that they tell us you know it's it's the same kind of formula even if there's conflict and so on it's always a happy ending for the most part unless you're watching a sort of darker kind of movie, not not for children. Megan is not 
the person whose entire universe surrounded around that dream, that illusion of number one, becoming a princess, number two, that her entire life would revolve around it. The beauty about Megan and, and what I think in addition to her beauty and all of that, that Prince Harry fell in love with is her independent mind and what she has done to build herself up to be her own person over and over and over again. Every self-help book I've read, seminar I've attended or anything like that, most of um, the people who are well uh, authors, wellness um, coaches and so on, the thing that they encourage you the most to do is to understand yourself, have time with yourself, to fall in love with yourself, to, 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 to care for yourself, to know who you are, to absolutely be able to function independently of anyone else. And with the idea very well placed that you don't need anyone to actually carry on with your life. Having a partner doesn't mean I need to have a partner. It's that I want to have a partner and you meet the criterias of how I want to be treated and how I will treat you, of how you respect me and how I will respect you. So you see, she is she was already well formed intellectually, emotionally. While if you compare her to the other person, their entire universe was built around you becoming a princess, you becoming a princess. Right? So when you have had to sacrifice, you've had to put up with weighty Katie, you've had to like do things that I'm sure she's had to do that she didn't want to do. I'm not going to assume what happens behind those doors, but I've got a pretty good idea. And I, I know most of you do also. Um, and here comes a woman who not only is a biracial black woman, which unheard of, they probably never thought they would see that in their lifetime. She comes into that family and that marriage with millions of dollars in her account. So she's not dependent on them financially. As a matter of fact, she upgrades Prince Harry with his little cottage thing that he was living in, right? Because we all thought it was a castle, but oh my goodness. I think the person who had the best reaction was Oprah. People would not believe me. People would not believe me if I told them. Right? She helped him buy new furniture. She had to pay for her own clothing because, you know, the billion dollar um, um, duchy that Charles had his hands on couldn't afford to pay or, or, or cover the black biracial um, um, daughter-in-law. What a, f ah, you know, when I go down the list of the things that have happened, it's infuriating. And to think that these morons are still like at it, but getting back to the point. So she is already well formed. She knows who she is. Now here, here's, here's the thing. When you love someone, Right? Because people say, oh, well, why didn't she leave earlier? Why did she blah, 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 blah. why did she feel this? Listen, if if you've ever been in love and you've loved someone and you think that person is, is it, and you have a good understanding and all of that, there are things you're willing to to compromise on, right? There are things that you're willing to let go, especially when it comes to that person's family. Because it's their family after all. And you'll compromise a little bit. And then you'll compromise a little bit more. Because sometimes you don't realize how much you're compromising. Right? And then it comes to a point where you're like, 
I don't, I'm not well. Like I'm, I've given up like so much of myself, compromising for these people. But, but, but still. But still and still. They, just see me. As a colored person. And I think when you have that moment of clarity, that moment where you realize it doesn't actually matter what I do, it will not change the way you see me. It will not change anything at all. So all of this suffering, all of this pain, I'm done. And I think in spare no in the docu series this part made me just i mean i i feel like crying right now when megan said she was on her on the flight back and i can see this i can honestly see this happening right and she's flying back to canada and the flight attendant well, it was the, the lead flight attendant, um, the purser, you used to call it at one point, or the head flight attendant comes up um, to her. Gosh, I'm such an emotional person. And thank her for what she's done. And she said, I tried. I tried so hard. You see, again, I get emotional with these things because it, I, I go back to experiences I've had, and I know what it is like to try so hard. And still, the hardest you've tried, and they still don't accept you. They still see you as worthless as nothing and to to have to confront those two things the amount of energy the amount of yourself that you've put in and the fact that it didn't move the needle one bit on the way these people see you it's 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 rough you know and I think people know she did her best not only her best that she went beyond her best and she had reached they had reached their final 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 give there wasn't any more given there wasn't any more given and you can see the treatment of these reporters when Megan spoke, wrote about her miscarriage, when she spoke about um, this, that deep, deep feeling that she knew she was going to do, you know, what she was thinking and, and what scared her was the clarity in her mind that she was going to do it. And these son of a... <laughs> still have the indecency to question her. Let me tell you, I know there is a God. I know there is. I know there is. And for some of us, <laughs> you know, God might be moving a little bit too slow. <laughs> but I've learned to not question. I've learned to not question. But I know there is a God. I know there is. Thank you, Matilda. All right, so let's see if we can fit these ones in. Um, Sarah Richardson writes, please do not delete anything. This is a great learning tool for trolls. Hopefully, one day they may stumble over and listen to it. It would do them a world of good. I agree with everything you said. Thank you, Sarah. I part of part of how I approach 
this podcast and um, each ep- ep- um, ep- episode is that I'm speaking to us, but I'm also speaking to someone who just stumbled onto this podcast that perhaps holds a certain viewpoint. And I think when and if one is able to say, here, here is the evidence, here is what I know to be true, and the things that you've been fed, here is why it's been fed to you, and here is why it makes no sense, that perhaps the person that is in the middle or doesn't hold any strong opinion either way, but because they're receiving all this negative um, information constantly for the past eight years, whether they know it or not, they have formed a negative opinion of Meghan Markle. And the hope is that maybe there's one thing I say, or maybe there's nothing I say, I don't know, but that they would at least question where their beliefs come from. You know, as a child, I always, and I think I told you folks this story before, we were, we were at mass at the, uh, <laughs> I'll forget it. Because it didn't make sense to me. It really did not make any sense to me. So I'm sitting, I'm sitting um, with my parents. And I mean, I, this is, it had never occurred to me before. But for some odd reason, that moment, that time, that Sunday, it occurred to me. So I said to my to my mom, who was next to me, I said, Mama, Mama. So my mom was like, oh, here comes this kid again. So I was like, oh, Mama. I was like, why? Why are there so many statues in our church? She's like, oh, they're, they're, they're the representation of like, you know, like, like Virgin Mary, St. Paul, St. Joseph, St. This saint that Jesus and the cross. And I'm looking at her and then I said, Okay, so I have a kind of a question. So, like in the Bible, it says that we shouldn't like um like worship idols. So why do we worship idols? Like why why do we kneel in front of the like they were made by people, right? So I don't understand. My mom is like, shut up. <laughs> She's like, she looks at my dad. She goes, please talk to your son. He has these questions. But the funny thing about that, though, even though I understand that, when I travel, I still go into a cathedral when I can. And I sit there because it brings me peace. I sit and I will pray. Um, I, I've, I've gone and I've lit a candle. There are certain things ritually that I still do, right? Because it brings me comfort. It, it, even, even though I, I, I see the illogicness about it, but I also see that it brings me comfort. And I, I don't, I'm not going to deny myself that. Um, so I, you know, Sarah, that, 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 that is part of, of, of why I, I, I do this because the hope is that, I mean, I've realized even with my own group of friends, my own family members, when I haven't seen a family member for a long time and this, this topic come, comes up, they will regurgitate everything the tabloids have said, everything. And then I'm like, okay, I've got my work cut out. (laughs) And I'll sit there, though. I'll sit there patiently and answer every question. And there are times where I get frustrated because I know I'm speaking to someone who does not intend to change their minds at all. And once I see there's a barrier that is quite solid that I'm not going to be able to even chip a little bit at it, it's not that I give up. I don't want to waste my time. Right, it's my time, my energy. We don't get time back. So I say, look, you're not going to change your mind. I've given you the evidence. Do with it what 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 you want to. If you have any further questions, by all the means, come back to me and I'll answer them. But don't waste my time. 
right? And I'll, I'll, I'll carry on. But thank you very much. And no, I didn't delete anything, but I've deleted many things. I've, I've had, I've sat here and talked for two hours about one topic or another, and then listened to it back again and said, no one is going to listen to this and um, deleted it. Uh, sometimes I, I regret it, but other times I was like, you know, I, I feel passionate about this stuff, right? But not everyone is going to stick and wait, listen to someone for two hours talking about, you know, this stuff, I think. Unless you're you're like Baron, right? Bar Baron, he's able to do that because he's live and, and, and he's, he's phenomenal. And he can bring up all this stuff and, and quote and, and he's very quick on his feet. Um, you know, he's, he's meant to, to, um, to do what uh, he's doing and the way he does it. So I am no Baron. <laughs> I don't fool myself. I have a pretty good idea <laughs> who I am, where I am, or what I stand in the picking order of things. Um, okay. So let's head to the next one. And that is Spidey Wabbit. <laughs> I love that name, Spidey Wabbit. Eddie Wabbit says, um, Tom Bauer did say Megan should be um, obliterated in order for the rift to be mended. And then um, on your next comment, you said, Excellent podcast, a tearjerker. Aww. Um, is, isn't it insidious, though, that a grown man, these people would actually they say these things which gives you an insight into the way they think and their mind when they were laughing about having Archie I don't even want to say it because I can feel I can feel the anger because <laughs> they were laughing they thought it was funny to have a baby dangled on a balcony. These people are sick. They are sick. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, there, there it goes. Um, I don't understand. How they can go to bed and sleep, you know, every day, every single day, maybe, maybe I've got a problem, <laughs> I probably do, my therapist would say I do. I go over my day, I think about the people I spoke with, the things I said, how I said them. And I review my day and I, I think about, okay, so that didn't go well. Maybe you should speak to that person again and apologize if it's something that I think I didn't um, convey well. Or I'll go through certain things and I'll say, okay, the way that person spoke to you was really not, not great. Like, you know, watch yourself around that. Be mindful of what you tell them. and all. So I'll go through how my day went and I'll, I'll reflect on it in order to be a better person the next day. And I do that every single night. And to think that they haven't reflected on any of that at all and thought it was quite okay to say the things they say, it's mind boggling to me, mind boggling to me. And um, Tear Jerker, listen, I, I made a decision a while ago and I said this before, I cannot be anyone else other than myself. And I never used to be this emotional before. I really wasn't. I was emotional, but not like this. I was a very, I, I, I you folks know who've been here for a while know, know, know my, my story, be, being, being a very sickly child. I was very th thin, like, 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 pain. <sighs> painfully thin. I was sick all the time. I was in, in, I was going to say hospital. <laughs> Baron would come back. It's the hospital. I was in the hospital. Um, I would say out, out of a month, I would probably be there 
you know, every other week, if not more. I always had tubes and things um, attached to me. And I learned somehow as a child to be a brave child. I learned to, to sort of experience what was happening to me in a different way. I started to create stories in my head and to withstand the pain that I was going through. And I remember very well, why am I getting emotional for this? I've told this story before. Um, when the doctor told my parents, and he was just so inconsiderable man, they, my parents didn't realize that that was what he was going to say. So they were by the door of my hospital room and he said he's not going to live beyond eight years. If not, he's going to probably die before that. And I saw my parents' face. I'll never forget their face. Never. And I thought as a child, hearing that, I thought I need to do everything in my power to not worry them, to not cause more pain to them. So no matter what was happening to me, whether I was being teased, abused, pushed, beaten, no matter what was happening to me, I never said a word because I never wanted to cause them more pain, ever grace of God <laughs> they found his doctor because my parents were relentless I loved them so much they found his doctor I don't know if I can tell the story completely because um, my parents now deny it <laughs> anyways I ended up receiving um, 40 something or something like that injections on my back and these are huge needles um, and in my second treatment, I received 30-something in my chest and my stomach. And then I was supposed to um, receive more depending on results. But I started to get better and better and better. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, by the grace of God, I'm still here. Um, so, you know, I was so brave and um, I think was trying to make sure I had all those emotions under control that as I've gotten older I find the human condition very um, it's like it's on my skin People's emotions, people's um, way of, of, of feeling, or I'll, I'll, I'll watch someone and I just, I was, I was in, a, I was on the subway at one point and I was with my brother and there was a person um, on the neck, on the seats across from us and I kept looking at her. And tears just started to fall down my eyes. And my brother said to me, what's wrong with you? And I said, there's so much suffering this woman is going through. And he just looked at me and goes, you're crazy. <laughs> he goes, you're nuts. And I don't know where that came from. I honestly don't know. But but there's times where I, I literally, I feel it. I, I can feel, I can feel it. And... It's become harder as I'm getting older to sort of hide it or to control it. So anyways, I've, I've kind of said, if I'm going to do this, I will not show up here and be someone else that I'm not. If something moves me, it moves me. If it makes me cry, it makes me cry. If it like makes me angry, it makes me angry. Of course, none of you are going to come and listen to someone crying all the time over everything, but um, I just let it be. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and now, um, Luvertha August. I love that name, Luvertha. I feel like, you know, you, you go and you go, excuse me, what's your name? 
La Versa. How you doing? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like that would be like a great like agent 774 or something, you know, <laughs> 774. Where'd I get that from? Okay. Um, forgiveness on Harry's part doesn't have to mean there has to be reconciliation. One can forgive without letting the tox toxic toxicity back into one's life. Megan demonstrated that with her father, and perhaps Harry will finally accept it. Your podcast was great. Oh, thank you. Your theme flowed smoothly and was easy to, to follow. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I am I'm trying to get better every day. Um, sometimes I think I succeed in it, and sometimes I think I'm just a failure. But I still pick myself up and say, okay, well, that one didn't seem that great. But you know what's funny, Lavertha, is that some of the ones that I think are total... It's just a fiasco. It's just awful. I was like, oh my gosh, I should have never, ever uploaded that um, episode. And then it will get the most comments or everyone's like, I love that one. It was so great. And I'm like, really? <laughs> so who knows? Who knows, right? Um, but the aim is for people to get something out of it, even if the smallest thing. Um, to have a little bit of an understanding and to get something out of it. So thank you very, very, very much. I much appreciate that. And I agree with you. I agree with you. One does not have to go back into a toxic environment, but one can forgive. I, I used to say, and I've gone, I don't know, the, the, you know, as, as one gets older and you, um uh feed yourself with, with 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 knowledge and education and ways to be a better human many times i've had to let go of anger i've had to let go of of that little feeling of just wait until i'm able to get you back and vengefulness and all of that is not it's not good it's not good for the soul it's not good for the spirit and i i've, I've learned to let go of, of a lot of that stuff i've often said i can still have a meal with a person it doesn't mean that the way we used to be before is the way we are today because maya angelou is completely right when someone tells you who they are believe them when they show you who they are, believe them. Stop inventing excuses for yourself so that you can be with that person. No, 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 no. They will show you who they are the first time, the second time. If you're still there by the third time, then forgive yourself, but get out of that. Right? I've had to give forgiveness to myself. I've had to many, many, many a times. I've had to have some really, really candid conversations with myself and said, you know, you, you didn't know, or you did your best, or you were so trust. Um, but one doesn't have to go back into a toxic environment. You know, I had something happened uh, 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 a few years ago that has affected me enormously. And to this day, I don't know if the person were to come and say, look, I'm sorry, it would make a difference. I don't think it will anymore because I've come to peace with it. I've had to come to peace and say, okay, they did this, they made those decisions in order to, I'm not sure in order to what, I know what it did was, was it, created an enormous amount of harm for me, an enormous amount of suffering. Um, but, you know, my, my, I had to look at things and say, my path is set out a certain way. And maybe these experiences, I've had to have them in order to be the person I am. And for that, what can I say? But it doesn't mean that I need to go and hang out with that person anymore. I see them when I have to. 
I can have a civil conversation with them when I have to, but there is no trust. There is no sharing of um, niceties or any sort of deep um, connection. Not there. I, um, and I don't want it to be, and will never be because it, it was a pretty, you know, awful thing. Same as Megan's dad, what he did to her was just awful, awful. It, 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 it bewilders me how a family member can do those things to you. I can't, I can't explain it. I really can't because I, I would never, but it's there. People have the capacity. <sighs> oh, well, thank you folks. I appreciate the, the time you've spent for all of you who have stuck around <laughs> for an hour and a half almost. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your graciousness with me. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your everything. Um, for accepting me with tears and all and uh, emotional, uh, I don't want to say basket case. That's not true. I'm not a basket case. I'm an emotional person willing to let it be. I want to thank you. Thank you all for, 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 for that. A big special thanks to Ampa 4980 Listen, if you think I can write a book, um, that is great. Uh, maybe I will, I'll try one day. Actually, someone told me that, um, that they saw my fortunes in actually writing. So maybe, maybe I will, who knows, peut-être. One of these days, um, Joe Duncan, thank you. Deborah Chambers, Prudence uh, Montague, Hugh, thank you. Spirit 5228, um, Mary Man, Mary Man, thank you so much for showing up on the, on the, um, I don't want to say they're not live, but that's what they're called now, premiere, and um, participate in the chats and all of that. Much appreciated. Um, Dolores. Um, Sims, thank you. Essie, thank you so much. Marsha Williams, all of you, thank you so very much for taking the time to write a note and to everyone else that listens. And um, I know you folks like to be incognito. Um, thank you. Every, every, every um, opportunity um, that you're here, I appreciate it. So, as we, as I say goodbye, um, don't forget to press that thumbs up button. Um, leave a comment if you wish to do so once again. And um, thank you. For those of you who don't see your comments posted or anything like that and question why, um, I want to give you a reason, but I th I'll do it in the next podcast or something because this is already an hour and a half but i've got my reasons and as to why and i still have to answer back to that person who accused me of making fun of 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 cancer and also someone said well i see what you're doing you're not gonna even one little comment i made and you're not even gonna you know publish it I'm not going to publish something that I deem that is not truth. It's not truthful. It's not a debate. If it was something I wasn't certain about and it's debatable what you're saying, then I may post it and let's debate it. But when you're saying things that are not the truth, when you're just saying things to anger people, when you're saying things because your opinion is extremely biased and one-sided, then I don't have any necessity to give you more airtime. Why should I? For what? There's enough channels that 
propagate this kind of hate, I by no means am going to be contributing to it. Thank you all. Take care of yourselves. Be kind to yourselves. Be kind to your loved ones and to that stranger that is crossing your path. You might be the only kind thing they've known all day, all week, all month. Thank you so very much. I appreciate each and every one of you. Until we speak again. Ciao, ciao. The Royal Family and Rupert Murdoch and his tabloid newspapers and journalists are doing everything they can to put pressure on Harry by trying their best to destroy Meghan and the children to stop this phone-hacking court case from going forward. Even the court itself doesn't want this case to go forward. The UK people are going to see how low and corruption has gone on to cover up their corruption. There's corrupt and corruption from the top to the bottom. Yes, Rupert Murdoch has been making millions of dollars daily off hatred against Meghan and encouraging others to join the hatred campaign. 365 days x 8 years, 2,920 days non-stop, never missing a day. Along with the so-called royal experts and sources and other mouthpieces that carry the message for royal family, there's no such thing as never complain, never explain. They're just four words used by the royal family that leaks and yes, forever complaining. The royal family believe. He who controls images controls everything. Robert Townsend. Their royal family has always tried to control everything they do. And yes, many in the world watching a family that think the whole world owe allegiance to them, no matter what they say or do. And of all people, King Charles is the head of the church. He's adultery. Queen Camilla is an adulteress, and they think we all should bow to them. Royal Family Protocol. Those at the bottom can't outshine those at the top. And if they do, the ones at the top will do whatever it takes to bring them down. Like all has seen them go after Meghan for a total of eight plus years and still going on daily as others make money off trying to destroy her daily. No one in authority has spoken out to stop this hatred and bullying and abusing against Meghan. Only a few has, as if the rest is afraid of the royal family. Can you imagine if you were getting death threat and bullying and abusing and lied on daily how you would feel and no one spoke out? Well, this is what the royal family has done along Rupert Murdoch and all of his tabloid newspapers and other media empire and all the social media platform daily and many of the other newspapers in the UK. <laughs>